catch some of these things. Like these are massive water sprouts. You see how big this one is? That's huge. Massive suckers, eh? And those have to come out. Now you can take, if you have a big empty spot in the middle of the tree and you have no fruit there, if you're sharp, you'll note that any branch, this is a big sucker here, any branch that's growing horizontally off of it could be saved to fill in a space if you didn't have anything else for that space. So I could save this little branch that I'm bouncing here. That little branch could become a future branch to fill in this gap in here if I wanted to. And so I would have to cut about an inch above it and just cut that one off. And if I cut it off an inch above, then that branch will probably survive. If I cut it too close to that branch, that, that little branch will probably die. So if you want to save something and keep it alive, don't cut too, too close to it. And that's one of the things I, I talk about quite often in pruning is not cutting too close. But the, the whole thing with pruning is trying to get some speed up because it can take forever sitting there trying to figure, should I take this one or that one? If in doubt, cut it out is often what happens because there's just way too many branches. You only need to have like a cluster of fruit and I can see here, see at the base of this little branch here, I'm starting to get this all where all these little buds are. That's the beginning of a, of a potentially a spur right there. So I can leave those little stubs for branches, you know, for, for fruit production. But just remember, we'll also get shoots off of that as well. You can, on a fruit tree, you can cut a branch off halfway along. Just remember the direction the bud is pointing is probably the direction that bud's gonna grow. So if it's pointing straight up, then like this little bud here is pointing straight up. So it's gonna grow in the direction it's pointing, upwards. But this one down here is gonna grow probably a little bit more outwards or downwards. So I may cut here and I cut straight across the branch. I don't cut it on an angle, if at all possible. And I'm always about at least a quarter of an inch away from it so that it doesn't die. If I cut too close to a bud, it'll just die. So I don't mind to have the tree constantly growing outwards, out, 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 away from itself, you know? And, and I always think of the branch as sort of like the fish bones. If I had fish bones, you know, and I have the spine and I have fish ribs on both sides of the spine sort of thing. And that's sort of ideal for to see a branch. So I have one on this side, one on this side, one on this side one sort of on this side, one, you know, it's growing out that way. I have my fruit right here, easy to pick. I had one branch that was down too low, but because we have to mow here sometimes, we don't want the guys mowing to hit their heads on the branches. So that's a factor. So the other thing is, is removal of, of dead wood. And here we can see a stub that was left a little bit too long last year. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's, 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 it's de dead from here out and in here this can become infected with disease sometimes and so w the best length this is actually starting to heal now and so I'm gonna just cut it just removing the disease material good luck because it's hard as a rock and that's about a half an inch now so all that was was it was left about an inch long so then it starts to die back and become diseased right but if I'm within a half an inch to a quarter of an inch, you generally don't get much disease. And that's a half an inch or a quarter of an inch before a living bud or a, where the branch attaches, that sort of thing. So, so in this one, I can see I got a branch right over top of this one. It's just going to block that one off. So I follow all the way back to here and cut that one off. And now this branch here is going to fill in this space here a little bit. I have a really good branch here. I'm going to just snip that off. This is just full of spurs. So this is going to be a heavy producing little branch here. It's got all kinds of these spurs. And so this upper branch could come off for now. And this is a crisscrossing branch. It's growing over top of this one. So this one is not really needed. And I might just leave that one. Um, and so just up above it here, I've got a, a, a sucker that's going straight up. These little pruners like this are, are only useful for little twigs. You need to have the big loppers. Loppers are ideal for doing fruit trees. And the longer, don't get little short handled ones because it's too much work to move them. Just get the longest ones you can get. 30 inch handles are perfect. 
with a nice sharp blade. Always keep your tools sharp and uh, you can go along and snip these things off. Utilizing uh, pole saws like this pole saw I was using here, I was showing you. These things are just excellent for pruning and uh, this particular one is nice because it weighs nothing. It's very light and I can get up top and remove some of these ones that are big big suckers from up top and sometimes if you're cutting on the bottom side of a branch the bottom of the branch is going to be very soft tissue and the top is going to be very hard tissue so what you usually do is you, you don't want a branch to break off and peel away so if you cut it first on the bottom to just to um, and I can see here there's actually a line on this one and it's very hard to see but there's a line right there where it goes from this new looking bark to old bark and that's actually the branch collar right there so you never cut into a branch collar so what we would do is cut probably right about in here somewhere and what I would do with this one is I would always cut on the underside first just to relieve the the uh, pressure off that branch meaning I don't want it to split so I would just make a cut underneath first and then I would come from on top but you can see this one I can't really get in there very well because it looks so great so I have a two angled cut which is okay if it's nice and clean and it is a fruit tree and then I grab it with my pole saw and I can move it around quite nicely I can carry it around and I can put it on a pile and when you have branches you put them in a pile all butts pointing the same way so they're easy to grab and pick up and move around so that's a really good tip always when pruning pile your branches with the butts pointing the same way just makes it way faster so there are some slightly different things with different types of fruit trees and I have other videos that have that in it but um, the, the thing with apples and pears is that they have a fairly big spur that's quite visible. And so uh, those large spurs are, are quite easy to see. So when you're pruning, you just have to remember that you probably want one spur about every eight or so inches, right? And that's gonna be a cluster of apples or a cluster of pears or whatever. Um, because those are bigger fruit, they need more space. So. You can, you're doing thinning as you go. In other words, if you have 50 spurs all in one cluster, which I've seen before, what's the point of that? Like, what are you gonna do if there's three or four apples on each spur? So, but to be able to just look and go, I know those are spurs, I'm gonna snip them all out, but one on this end, one on that end, so I have about a six inch space. So six to eight inches or so is about perfect. And uh, so other plants, like say these cherry trees, they have such small fruit, you can pretty much load them up with fruit. Like it's not too much of an issue, but it's just to me, it's a common sense thing. So if you have a cluster of cherries being born on the top of a branch, that's kind of useless because they're, they're just gonna fall over. And when, it, when, a, when a piece of fruit touches a branch, that's where the, the earwigs are gonna get in there and the diseases are gonna spread to the fruit. And the fruit's gonna get, whenever the wind blows, it rubs on the fruit, so it makes a wound in the fruit. And that attracts other insects and fruit flies and stuff. So, so just to, as an awareness, the fruit should always hang freely, if at all possible. And uh, sometimes you can do, like this is dormant pruning, but if you come back in the summertime and you feel like you could take a branch off here or there, that's perfectly fine. Uh, removing a, the occasional branch in summer is, is really good and the plants usually don't respond much to that meaning they don't sucker or produce a bunch of shoots they'll just you know they might produce one shoot or something but not much so summer pruning kind of slow it doesn't really slow the growth so the plants just don't really respond much to it but spring pruning and winter pruning plants respond with a burst of growth right after you prune it so if you cut out one branch next year there will be five branches there <laughs> it just keeps multiplying and it's the other reason why with ornamental pruning you don't want to do much pruning at all with that ornamental shade tree when you're done pruning it shouldn't look like it's been pruned you shouldn't be able to see that there's any pruning been done all you've done is improved it so you don't prune ornamental plants to make them smaller you prune them to make them better you're pruning these really so much to and make these them plants, smaller not really however that is one of the things it's just accessibility right 
but uh, it's really just all around with fruit trees let the sunshine in make it easy to spray make it easy to pick you know make it easy to get in and out of the tree for ladders and that sort of thing and uh, make it easy to mow around underneath because that's something that happens you know people on ride a mowers that sort of thing is really important so I guess that's basically it uh, for today but I just wanted to make sure that we touched on these topics on on pruning and over time we'll do more on pest and disease management as well so that's it